Welcome to the Stronger Than Steel podcast with your host, Austin Davidson and John Keir, talking Steelers all the time. Now, here's Austin and John. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Stronger Than Steel podcast. Today is Season 3, Episode 70, and today we're going to be previewing the Conference Championships. And some of you may be asking, Austin, you never did a divisional recap. What are you, what are you talking about? I, I was debating it for a while, and I came to the conclusion that I really should just not because I didn't watch half the games due to work, and I didn't really want to give you guys a bad episode where I didn't really know what I was talking about. I was only able to watch the Colts Chiefs and the Eagles Saints. I didn't catch any of the Chargers Patriots and the Cowboys Rams. I, I only got to keep, see like a quarter. So I decided it was just time to move on from that and just go to the conference championships where I should be able to watch mo- most of both. So I, w- I will be able to recap that. And I think John will be able to uh, recap it as well, but I, I don't guarantee that. I'm not sure that uh he's going to be ready. I don't, I, I don't know how much he can watch. I think he's still on the boat. But anyway, now that that's out of the way, before we get into the actual conference championships, let's talk about some Steelers and NFL news. The first big Steelers news is that Mike Munchak has decided to move on from the Steelers organization and take his expertise over to Denver, where he has family. Uh, He remains the O-line coach in Denver uh, there, and they got a great one. That's the best way to put it. It's just the Steelers... It's unfortunate the Steelers let his contract run out, but I mean, maybe he just really wanted to get that job in Denver because once he didn't get the head coaching job, it seemed safe. It seemed like, okay, he's going to remain in Pittsburgh, but he really wanted to be close to his family, and I respect that, and I really wish the best for him. The Broncos definitely got got a great one, and in his place, Sean Serrett, formerly the assistant offensive lineman coach, has been promoted to take Munchak's place, so the Steelers didn't really look far uh, for his uh, replacement for a little bit. I, I I looked at the Colts offensive line uh, line coach. Obviously, the Colts finished with uh, offensive line with the least amount of sacks given up and a really good run game with like by committee with Marlon Mack and Naheem Hines and that. So I thought of him, but I you know what Sean Sarrett makes sense. Apparently, he's Mike Munchak's one one hand man. And I feel like he should probably deserve a chance at least. But uh, yeah. As for running backs coach, they went outside of the NFL, but with someone they are familiar with. Eddie Faulkner, the tight end slash fullback coach and special teams coordinator from NC State, has been hired for the position. Uh, There are two different types of familiarity here. First is that he coached Jalen Samuels back when uh, Samuels was at NC State, so uh, he's got that connection. But then he was also a member of the Steelers organization at one point. Not a coach, but he was a player. This uh, He was on the Steelers practice squad back in 2001 as an untracted free agent. Uh, he didn't end up making the team, but he was on the practice squad for a little while. Moving on, like the Cardinals used to be with Arians, uh, the Bucks are looking like the Steelers South, having hired Antoine Randall L. as an offensive assistant, already having Byron Le- Leftwich as their offensive coordinator and such, so... Uh, the Bucks are going to basically be the Steelers' south uh, while Arians is there. But uh, he's not the only former Steeler to get a coaching job. Deshae Taun- uh, Townsend uh, has joined the Bears as an offensive backs coach. So Steelers are, ex-Steelers are getting jobs all around the league. Next up, TJ Watt has been named to his first ever Pro Bowl after Texans Jadavian Clowney dropped out. So congratulations to him. Uh, then uh, we got some... Not so good news, but I'm sure it's mutual. Uh, Morgan Burnett has been asked to be released from his deal prior to free agency, saying that he felt played that he felt that he played out of position as a dime linebacker and wants to play only safety again. Uh, Steelers would save just over 3.5 million in salary cap by cutting him. Uh, and honestly, I think that's the move. I think that he was bad in Pittsburgh. Uh, when he first got there, he said he would be comfortable playing dime linebacker because he was used to it. And, you know, I feel like this is just an easy out just to say, yeah, I wasn't playing in the right position. He, when he came in, there was an interview where he said, like, yeah, I would do it. Uh, I can do it. I mean, safe, he did say that safety is his ideal spot, but he feels comfortable in dime linebackers. So I honestly think it's going to be mutual. I think we all wanted Morgan Burnett cut anyway after he was a massive disappointment this year. But, yeah, so I think that I think that this is going to be a mutual move. And, Honestly, I I guess it's good for everybody. But anyway, 
Uh, finally, Chakuma Okorafor got surgery on what appears to be his shoulder. Uh, we only know this because he posted a picture saying he got surgery, and it looked like it was either his shoulder, elbow, or arm. But to me, it was look, looking like uh, shoulder, and uh, he was he was playing through that, which means only greater things are coming from him in the future. He was playing through an injured soldier that he needed uh, surgery on. But that wraps up the Steelers and NFL news, so let's get into the first conference championship game. Sunday at 3.05 p.m. later today is the Rams at the Saints. In the previous meeting, they met in November on the 4th. Uh, the Saints won 45-35. Uh, then for the injury report, the Rams literally have no one on their injury report. For the Saints, they have Keith Kirkwood with a calf and Benjamin Watson, who has ap uh, appendicitis, are out. So, what's it going to take for both teams to win this game? For, I'm going to start with the Rams because I guess technically they are the underdog since they're the two seed and uh, they are away. I think the Rams need Jared Goff to play like early season Jared Goff. I said it for the Cowboys game that I thought he would be the reason they lost in that game. And he really didn't play that well still. He still hasn't really played well for two months and he just needs us to pick it up. I feel like... I don't really know what happened. Maybe uh, the scheme was so simple that teams' defenses just started uh, picking up on it, and it's caused him to stutter a bit. But he was looking like an early, like part of the MVP conversation early on. It's just now it just doesn't seem like he could keep up with like the best of them. It's just it's gonna be hard for them to win this game. I think I, I just don't think Jared Goff his success didn't last, and that makes me question his abilities. I I really don't know. If he's going to be able to beat a team that could put up as many points as the Saints, uh, especially not with his uh, wide receiver do uh, wide receivers he's got, I'm not particularly fond of Brandon Cooks. It's just it's never how I've been. I, I've really never liked Brandon Cooks, even when he was on the Saints. I always thought he was just a guy that could run fast in one direction, and that was really it. And he draws PI calls, and that's always good. But I mean. What's funny about this game is Rams fans actually made a petition to get a referee off of it. I forget the ref's name, but I think his name was Vic something. But apparently, uh, the Rams are 0 and 8 when he uh, when he refs the game, and 0 and 2 in 2018 when he uh, refs the game. And apparently, in seven of the eight games, the other uh, the Rams have been called for more penalty yardage and the other game they were called the same amount so uh the rams are not going to be good with uh getting penalty calls in this game similar to like that game where we came in with the steelers uh it was against the saints too that's actually funny now that i remember it when the steelers came in against the saints and it was like the refs uh generally went with uh the home team way more they favored them it's going to be the same for the Rams. So the Rams are going to have to be coming in expecting to play the rest in this game while they're already away playing against the Saints who already beat them this year. So it's going to be a, a tough uphill battle for them. For the Saints, it's just going to be uh, the normal thing. they got to stop the run. C.J. Anderson has been on fire, and apparently they're sp uh, he's been on such fire that they're splitting reps. Todd Gurley and C.J. Anderson are going to be splitting reps, and they're going to be using them however they feel. And... Um, I feel like it's it's not going to work. I feel like the Saints are going to be the team to finally uh, make it stop. And I feel like the Rams are going to have to rely on Jared Goff because I feel like the Saints are just a powerhouse. Their offense is just... Their offense is going to be fire, come out firing. I think like the Eagles did against the Saints. Like they, they might get a fast start against the Rams. And it's going to force Jared Goff to throw. And that's what's going to make... Uh, running in this game not effective for the, the Rams because I think they're going to have to get away from it. I think they're going to have to try and uh, put everything on Jared Goff. I mean, you really can't give up on the run with them. They, they're they always going to run on you because that's where they're best, especially now that C.J. Anderson just looks like he's a brand-new running back for who's considered a fat back. Like he, he runs with such athleticism. It's incredible. I can't believe the Raiders cut him. The Raiders and the Panthers cut him. It's just... Amazing. I mean, you can't downplay the Rams' offensive line, though. Uh, some people have said that this is the best run-blocking line in history. And, uh, you know what? It's sort of deserved. They're just playing really well. They put up blocks, and they don't really get that many penalties. They're just a really, really good offensive line. And still, I think they're underrated, for even though people are uh, saying things like that about them. But 
regardless. Um, I feel like... I feel like I covered this not too much. You know what? Yeah, let's let's talk more about the Saints defense because I feel like I didn't talk about them enough. I feel like you know I actually didn't talk about the Rams defense at all. Let's talk about the Rams defense in this first. I feel like Akeem Talib isn't the player that he used to be like when he was on the Broncos. I feel like he's going to struggle, especially if he's going to be the cornerback one against Michael Thomas. It's just it's a mismatch. Michael Thomas what he does we saw what he did last game. It's just it's going to be hard for Talib to keep up. And I mean, the only thing that the Rams really got going for them, I think, because I, I'm not really high on the Rams defense. That's why I really didn't have much to talk about. I like Corey Littleton, but Corey Littleton is like a special teamer. I like Aaron Donald, of course, because Aaron Donald's one of the best players in the NFL right now. But like their secondary isn't that good with like Lamarcus Joyner and and those guys that keep Talib. It's just. Marcus Peters isn't playing like uh, he has with the Chiefs. I just, I'm not a big fan. I think that Drew Brees is going to dice him up. But the one thing that they do got going for them, as I was saying, is Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald is going to be a big reason uh, for a win if they win. I feel like it's going to be hard for him because it's against the Saints highly ranked offensive line, one of the best in the league as well. But the Saints are way really, really good at pass protection. I mean, Aaron Donald's one of the best players in the league, so it doesn't, it shouldn't matter how good the offensive line is, but I think he's not going to have the success that he normally has against other offensive lines. But I feel like that's what they're going to be betting on. Same for the Saints defense, actually. I have Cameron Jordan being a big, uh, a, a big factor in this one. I feel like he's going to be, uh, have to mess up that offensive line. And like I said, they're better run blocking than pass blocking, but Still, uh, Cameron Jordan's going to be big in this game f for both his uh, pass rushing and his run stopping. But that's really all I got to say about the Rams and Saints. So let's get in the score and bold predictions. So for score, I have the Saints winning pretty convincingly 35-24 to with an 11-point margin where I think that the Rams maybe get a late touchdown so that it was like 35-17 and then it gets made 35-24. But... Uh, I just don't believe in the Rams very much. I don't think they're a very good team. I think either, it didn't matter who was getting here. I think if the Eagles somehow beat the Saints, which I mean, last week uh, last week they started off 14-0 and against the Saints, and it, it looked like the Saints were in a pretty bad spot, but uh, I just I think that either team that got here was beating the Rams. The Rams just haven't been the same team since Jared Goff hasn't been playing as good. So I'm going to take the Saints to win. Uh, for... Poll prediction, I have Alvin Kamara having three touchdowns in this game. I think that the Rams are penalized heavily this game with over 120 penalty yards. And then uh, my third bowl prediction is Michael Thomas keeps up his monster postseason and has a 160-yard, one-touchdown game. So that wraps up the NFC Championship game. Let's go to the AFC side. Sunday, 6.40 p.m., Patriots at Chiefs. In the previous meeting they had this year, it was on October 14th. Uh, the Patriots won 43-40. to 40. Uh, for, As for the injury report, the Patriots have no one. The Chiefs have Dorian O'Daniel with an ankle and calf. Uh, he is out, but that's really it. That's all the Chiefs got. Not even Eric Berry is on the injury report or Justin Houston. So, it's going to be interesting for the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs have... a have a better defense than when they versed the Patriots the first time. They didn't have Eric Berry or Justin Houston, either of those guys. So it's going to be a little bit better for them in that regard, and that might just be the difference. Obviously, the Chiefs only lost by three points last time in a shootout, but, I mean, you throw in a guy like Justin Houston and you go throw in a safety like Eric Berry, like all the Chiefs defense say that the defense is different when Eric Berry is there. And I think that's going to be the truth. I think the Chiefs... Excuse me. I think the Chiefs defense is going to be playing better with Eric Bear there. I feel like they now have a star at every like every position. Like they got Chris Jones for the defensive line. They got uh Justin Houston at linebacker now. And now for defensive backs, they got Eric Berry back there. So uh I mean even for cornerback they have Fuller, so I feel like they got at least one guy in every position that could play at a high level. I feel like that's going to help them. I mean, really, with how the Patriots squad has been, it's going to be about tackling, though. Uh, the Patriots have been one to just run all over you. Uh, I mean, they ran up the score against the Chargers uh, last year, uh, last week. I'm sorry. 
And they've been living off a of dink and dunk, run heavy offense, and that's really been it. I mean, in the the last meeting, that's not really how it was. I feel like Tom Brady actually threw for a lot, but it's just for the most part, it's been about containing their running backs. They have just so many good running backs that play at a high level, like Sony Michelle, James White, Rex Burkhead, and they all do different things. Like James White is just a great pass catcher, and then um, Sony Michelle has proven to be a really good runner, and. Uh, Rex Burkhead has been used on like goal line situations, but he's really good at pass catching as well. So he's like kind of like a mid back, but they use all their backs and they're really good at it. Uh, it's working for them. It's kind of strange to almost see a, a run first Patriots offense that still has Tom Brady at the helm. But I mean, they're doing what works. I mean, obviously, we I think we all think this Patriots team is a little weaker than in previous years. Obviously, they're playing off like they're underdogs, like which is absolutely stupid like oh bet against us like oh boohoo patriots of course you get the one time you're like bet against anyway <coughs> excuse me i'm sorry i'm still a little bit sick if you couldn't tell by the way but uh back to the game the patriots offense uh has just been good and that's the best way to pay say it. it's kind of funny it's just Every single what every single one of these teams has in common. Every single team in uh, that's left, even the NFC side, they all have good offensive lines. The Chiefs, great offensive line, uh, very underrated but great. Uh, Patriots, really good offensive line. Saints, probably more, the second best offensive line, and then the Rams are up there. The Rams are a top five offensive line. So. You got all. Uh, it, it seems like offensive line is the key to making it this far. I don't know why the Steelers didn't make it. With that being the case, but I uh, I can't talk enough about how well the Saints offensive line has played. They played really well, not in the Steelers game, but um, they're better now. I feel like they play as a whole better. A lot of that has to do with how much they run, because I'm I'm mostly talking about their sack statistic, but they're still pretty good in, in run blocking too. Obviously, all their uh, Patriots running backs find success, so. Uh, the the offensive line has to be doing something right, but uh, now let's talk to the Chiefs. Uh, like their offense compared to the Patriots' defense, Patrick Mahomes is unstoppable. It's just I I don't see how the Patriots stop him in this game. They need to force turnovers like they did the first game, uh, because they actually did uh pick off Patrick Mahomes that game, and it was a big deal because Patrick Mahomes hadn't really had turnovers until that point, but. Still, uh, they're going to have to find a way to disrupt his, his talent. Maybe, I don't even know if pressure's the the idea, but like the Patriots haven't even been good at, at pass rushing. They have one good pass rusher in Trey Flowers, and that's really it. They don't really got anyone else that's good at pass rushing. And, I mean, their sack totals for the year says it. I mean, the Patriots have been a team that puts up a, a high score. It's not like they... Uh, teams give up on throwing and they can't get sacks. The, the Patriots aren't very good at it. So I don't even know if applying pressure is a move for the Patriots. I feel like almost dropping people into coverage is the move. I, I But I really don't know. I don't think there is any anything to stop Patrick Mahomes. Because, I mean, it's not even Patrick Mahomes either. The, the Patriots have just struggled, struggled against Tyreek Hill in particular. And they said it coming into this game like, yeah, we still really don't have an idea on how we're going to stop Tyreek Hill. It's just mostly hoping, <laughs> which is... Uh, kind of funny, but it's just Tyree Kill is a speed mismatch for almost every single player in, in the NFL. And it's hard for the Patriots in particular stop. They don't have that speed anywhere e either, so there's not like a guy that they could put on him. Steven Gilmore has actually played pretty well this year, but he's just not got that speed. And I mean, it's not just like Tyree Kill is their only option. Uh, Travis Kelsey has been playing well. Sammy Watkins is now back and playing like what are you going to do? And then Damian Williams. I love Damian Williams in Miami last year uh, when he split uh, reps with Kenny and Drake. I thought he was a steal for the Chiefs, and it's showing. Damian Williams is playing at a high level. Uh, and Spencer Ware is back for this game as well. So they're probably going to be splitting carries depending on – they're probably going to see how the game goes and see who does better. But I feel like both their running backs are really good. And uh, I feel – I feel like the Chiefs offense is unstoppable. I feel like the Patriots defense doesn't have anything to slow it down. I feel like there's nothing. They don't got a good pass rush. They don't have good enough corners to stop Tyree Kill. They don't have good enough linebackers to stop Travis Kelsey or corners or safeties. It's just they're it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard for the 
the Patriots to win this game, they're going to need to force turnovers, in my opinion. They're going to have to find a way somehow, whether it's forcing a fumble on Spencer Ware or Tavian Williams or somehow like deflecting a pass at the line scrimmage and picking off Patrick Mahomes. Something's got to be done to win this game. But let's get into the score prediction. I'm going to say that the Chiefs win 43-40, to reversing the score uh, that they had earlier in the year. And I think that's because Justin Houston and Earl Thomas are the... I, I'm sorry, I just said Earl Thomas. <laughs> I don't know why that's on my head. I guess because the Chiefs tried trading for Earl Thomas right before he got hurt. But uh, I, I meant Eric Berry and Justin Houston. I think they're the difference makers in this one, and the Chiefs just barely get by. Uh, I think Patrick Mahomes is perfect, throwing for 400 yards and 5 touchdowns. And Tom Brady is also perfect, throwing for 350 yards and 4 touchdowns. Uh, then I said there's only one turnover in this entire game, and it's a Sony Michelle fumble, and that's the difference maker. That's what puts the Chiefs over uh, the Patriots in this one. Anyhow, uh, that really wraps up both games. It's the uh, AFC and NFC Championship weekend. It feels like this year has went way too fast. Like We're already close to having no football. It's just two weeks, we're going to be having a Super Bowl. Like How ridiculous is that? That's absolutely crazy. Um, anyhow, uh, I should probably get into my X factors before I start talking about stuff that <laughs> wraps this up. For the Rams, um, I, oh by the way, I'm gonna since there's only obviously four teams left, I'm gonna do X factors for offense and defense. For the Rams, it's C.J. Anderson. It's kind of not often you pick a backup running back to be a difference maker, but he's on fire. He's been on fire through the playoffs t- since the end of the year, and he is gonna be. A, a big reason uh, if they win. Then, like I said, same thing for uh, defense. Aaron Donald, big reason if they win. For the Saints, it's Alvin Kamara. I feel like Alvin Kamara is going to be huge in this game. I feel like he's going to go big. And then on the other side, I'm picking Cameron Jordan to pass rush Jared Goff because Jared Goff has already not played good. If Cameron Jordan could get a pass rush uh, without like extra blitzing and stuff, I feel like it, the game is the Saints to, to lose. For the Patriots, I'm going Sony Michelle. I feel like he's played really well uh, so far. Obviously, I picked him to have a big fumble in this game. That's going to be uh, game-changing, so I'm going to make him my X-Factor based on that, really. Then for the other side, I'm picking Trey Flowers. He's their only good pass rusher, and I really couldn't come up with anyone else. I mean, I picked Stephen Gilmore last week, so I, was gonna, I wasn't going to do it again. For the Chiefs, I got Tyreek Hill. Uh, the Patriots haven't been able to stop him, and I think that continues. I just think Tyreek Hill's going to mess him up. And then for defense, a guy I actually didn't mention much is Chris Jones. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this now. Chris Jones is the most underrated player in the NFL, in the entire NFL, any position. I don't know why no one talks about him. Like, uh, first of all, he has a funny beginning. Like, his his uh, draft, uh, I'm sorry, his combine was hilarious. Uh, I'm not going to explain why, if you guys don't remember, I'm going to tell you guys to just look it up. Um, but uh, then, but for for real, like, his actual pass rushing ability is amazing. Like, he's just really, really good. And I just, I feel like no one talks about him. Maybe it's just because his name is so, like, pedestrian, it doesn't stand out. I don't know. He's one of the best pass rushers in the league. Top five. Top five. I, I'm, not, I'm not even kidding. Because he just... He plays so well. I don't know why no one talks about him. But that wraps up my X Factors. Now, with four teams left, I wanted to talk about Super Bowl possibilities. Um so first I want to talk about what I want to happen in order of the four possibilities that could happen. <coughs> Excuse me again. Firstly, I want Saints Chiefs. It's what I predicted to happen, obviously. But uh, I think that's going to be the most entertaining Super Bowl. It's something we haven't seen. It's two pretty solid offenses, and it's going to be interesting to see the Saints defense could stop uh, Patrick Mahomes. I think it would be a good game. Following that, we have Rams-Chiefs. Uh, I feel like I was being edgy earlier this year saying I didn't like that game. I'm going to take it back because there's like two defensive touchdowns. It was a really good game, and I think a rematch of that game would be incredible. I Only if Jared Goff can pick it back up, though, because... I mean, I, I, I'm i betting on that happening if, if that game were to happen. Since if, if the Rams advance to uh, pass the Saints, it's because Jared Goff returned to form. But I th- So I think Rams Chiefs would be good. Then uh, third, I Saints Patriots. Really, I think it would be a good game. 
Might even be better than the Rams Chiefs. I just don't want to see the Patriots in the Super Bowl. I think I'm we're all tired of it. Uh, I think it would be a good good game, and that's why I ranked it above the Rams Patriots. I don't think the Rams Patriots would be a good game. I think the Patriots would win that quite easily. Because I think that it's just I don't know the Patriots just have a way of beating teams, even though it's a Super Bowl mismatch. Uh, I'm mean, sorry, not a mismatch, a Super Bowl rematch, uh, which would be cool. I just it doesn't tickle my fancy. I just don't want to see the Patriots back in it, and I don't want to see them win, if anything. So now that I said what I want to happen, what I think will happen, again, I already told y'all, I, but in my predictions, I have the Saints winning, I have the Chiefs winning. That means Saints and Chiefs are going. I think that's the most likely scenario. The second most likely scenario for me is the Saints-Patriots. I think the Patriots have a better chance of beating the Chiefs than the Rams have a chance of beating the Saints. So that basically tells you the story for the last two, which I have Rams and Chiefs next because I think that the Chiefs... Uh, would have a better chance of beating the Patriots than, uh, than the uh, Rams. I'm sorry. Then, uh, yeah, I just have the Chiefs beating the Patriots more than anything. And then my final one is a game I want to see the least is the Rams Patriots. I just can't see both teams advancing. It would be the first time in, I think, since Baltimore 49ers Super Bowl that the 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 both number two seeds advanced. Or, or maybe it wasn't both the number two seeds. I think it might have been just the uh, the away team advanced to the Super Bowl. But still, it's just very unlikely. I, I don't think it will happen. So I think that's the least likely scenario. But that really wraps up this podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed, enjoyed listening, please subscribe. All our social media is going to be in the description below. So go check those out as well, including our website. Go check that out. We're on SoundCloud and YouTube, so if you listen on SoundCloud, check us out on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, check us out on SoundCloud. SoundCloud gets the uh, gets the episodes first, so uh, if you if you want to listen to these episodes earlier, go check out SoundCloud. Uh, anyway, everybody, it's been a pleasure. Have a good night. You have been listening to Stronger Than Steel Podcast. Thank you for joining us today, and don't forget to check out our website listed in the description below.